Uh, so let's address some of the questions that came in, a lot of them about school funding and taxes. And so uh, I think the biggest understanding is to uh, realize that since 2006, with the passage of Act 388 in the state of South Carolina, 4% properties or primary homes are not taxed for school operations. A lot of time when you meet with people in the community, uh, they talk about pre-2006 tax structures where their property, their primary home, their 4% assessed property was paying for teachers and paying for staff and paying for supplies at the school uh, for operational needs for equipment and rehab. Uh, with the passage of Act 388, that moved that so that uh, more of that share would come from state or sales uh, sales tax. As a result, what does pay for operations, your, your cars, your boats, uh, RVs, 10% uh, um, properties, or 6% properties like rental properties uh, and businesses, those will pay for operations. But in a bedroom community uh, like uh, Lexington Richland 5, uh, when a subdivision of primary homes come in, uh, they may bring in 200 students, but it would not bring in money for the teachers for those 200 students. That would exist on the exam, uh, in terms of the 4% property, that would exist on uh, the, uh, the, the current 6% uh, properties that are in our, uh, in our footprint. So mainly businesses. So let's look at what the operational pot looks like. And I think it's uh, fair to use uh, real numbers. Here's a, the word problem that we are dealing with. The school district identified August of 2023, $182,141,490.92 uh, of identified needs. That's over 11,000 incidences of repair uh, that were addressed um, in the summer of 2023 when it was reported. So where does the money come from? Well, we have $215 million in our operational fund. 64% uh, of that comes from the state. 35% of that comes from the local government. That's the, the local taxes for operating. And then we have 1% in grants. How do we spend this $215 uh, million dollars. Now, this hasn't been audited yet. You can go back to last year's CAFR and see basically the same percentage breakdown as we're currently in. But these are the funds that we're sending to the auditor. 88% of the $215 million went to salaries and benefits for the people who work in School District 5. 88 cents of every dollar goes to the people. So with utility costs uh, of power, and water, and gas, uh, all of that uh, with, with services such as lawn care or legal services or uh, substitute services, uh, seven cents of every dollar goes to that. Four cents of every dollar will go to supplies and materials. And then one cent from every dollar will go to equipment. So you can see trying to find the 182 million out of this jar of money uh, does not allow us to tackle these problems. And as you know, we add on to these problems each and every day. Uh, our maintenance staff uh, has done a calculation of, we average about 584 new incidences of, of items that need to be repaired every month, 584. We can clear about 84% of those, but that just compounds day in and day. And so in uh, 1951, there was the School Bond Act. The School Bond Act was, a, was passed uh, for four main purposes, to repair schools, to construct schools, to renovate schools, and to equip schools for the instructional needs of that district. This was to give schools funds so they would not have to use this pot, the operational, to take care of their, uh, their identified needs. Now, with the School Bond Act, you are limited to 8% of 
of the total assessed value of your uh, community, of your tax district. That number, uh, as of uh, our, per Chris Harmon, our, who is our uh, county auditor for Lexington, is $52.7 million. Now again, uh, $52.7 million, we have a $182 million problem. We have currently used about 88% of these funds. So we don't have 100% of these funds available to us. About 88% of this is already used. Uh, you say, well, where's it used? In annual maintenance that we have, uh, in repairing roofs uh, and, and HVAC systems, uh, in handling ADA compliance issues. And a large chunk of that, if you're on St. Andrews, uh, you pass by Irmo High School, you can see coming out of the ground, uh, the new wing at Irmo High School. So about 88% of this is already used. So again, the math does not work uh, in terms of how to fix this. So our proposal is to go over the $52.7 million cap. The law states that in, over, in order to go over this 8%, to go to 9% or anything above the 8%, you must ask the community through a bond referendum. Now, we have calculated that if we ask the community for $400 million uh, to go over 8%, to go above 400 million, that would require a tax increase. Now, it's, un, it's important to understand that there's two taxes. One tax is for the operation. Another tax is called debt service. Debt service pays for the bonds. So when bonds are issued or general obligation bonds are issued to the community, uh, uh, for, we usually sold on Wall Street, uh, there's principal and interest. The community pays a debt service tax all properties are assessed a debt service tax. That debt service tax pays uh, the, the debt on those bonds that are issued. To go and borrow $400 million, our district would need to increase the debt service tax to service that those bonds. That's the threshold uh, for our, our, our school district. What the school district is asking for is to stay under that threshold. To borrow 240 million, it's over the 8%, which needs a bond referendum, but it's under the tax rate increase threshold. By borrowing $240 million, we would be able to uh, significantly impact the identified need within uh, the school district. As a um, school district, it's important that we understand that we cannot advocate uh, a side, but we must explain the financial uh, situation and the uh, financial outlook for a district. These are the only two pots. Uh, the question was, is there a slush fund or anything? We were audited by uh, multiple agencies uh, from uh, independent auditors uh, to our annual CAFR uh, that is submitted to the state, to the state finance uh, department itself, to the Office of uh, Inspector General. Uh, our numbers are the numbers here, and this is the reality. So as um, our district no longer has access to uh, the ESSER funds, these are the other realities that we have in terms of taking care of that. So. So a tax fact that is important to understand is the bond referendum will not increase the tax rate. This debt can be serviced with the exact same millage rate that we currently have. 